Hi guys! I know it's been a while since I've done my last 1 and 144 inch scale project, and I know I'm long overdue. Even though winter is coming to a close, I decided to do something winter related, something I've been trying to do for the last year. This is Elsa's Ice Palace from the movie Frozen. And if you've ever seen the movie Frozen, you know she built her castle on the North Mountain, so of course I had to construct that as well. The best thing about this project is it's made entirely from everyday household items, such as styrofoam, plastic packaging, some clothing tags, plastic straws, bath tissue, and some nail polish for color. I used fairy lights to light it up, and with some creative coloring, I made them radiate from purple to aqua. And of course, I had to also place her majestic balcony and her signature staircase. I'm Kat Williams, and I hope you enjoy this video. So to start, I'm using some one inch blocks of foam. You can get these anytime you order any sort of electric um, item or an appliance or utensil from out of a store. And also, if you want, you can walk into Home Depot and purchase one. They cut very easily with an X-Acto knife or a hot knife, whatever you have. And in this case, I'm using a steel ruler. Now this block says that it's 8 by 6, but I mismeasured and it's 7 by 6. I also did a 6 by 6 block. And I placed the 7 by 6 block on top of the 6 by 6 block. Glue that in place using Elmer's or any other white or PVA glue. And then I added another block in. This one is just meets up to the end of the platform. And I'm sorry, I wrote down the wrong measurements for everything. This is actually a four and a half by five inch block that's on there. And now a six by one and a half inch block. And these measurements, of course, do not have to be exact. For that matter, my estimate of the castle's height um, is completely imaginary. I went on to some Disney guest type blogs and figured out, based upon some other people's guesses, what my measurement should be. Then a one by three and a half inch block as well in the front. And this is just to make it look like the various grades of the mountain. And then a small piece of quarter inch foam onto the back. It's only a quarter inch thick and seven inches long. And then I used a permanent marker to kind of etch out how I wanted my mountain to be cut. And I'm using an old soldering iron for this. This is one I don't use anymore to actually solder. Um, so this makes really quick work of the styrofoam. However, they do make um, foam knives and foam uh, wire cutters for the same purpose. And if you don't have a foam wire cutter or foam or anything of that sort, you can always use a couple of different methods. You can score it and snap it with your fingers. And you can also just cut it with an, with an X-Acto knife or a knife or a hot knife of your own. I'm not using any science to cut this. I'm just trying to cut it so it's aesthetically pleasing to me. And of course, I also put up a big Disney um, Elsa Frozen Palace wallpaper screen on my computer while I was working. And that way I could reference that photo easily. I reused chunks where I could. So this one came off very top and now I'm placing it at the front and because I'm going to cut off roughly half of this I'm going to reuse those chunks as well and now for the platform where part of the castle is going to actually stand 
I'm cutting into the embankment along the side to make it look a little more natural. And this is actually going to also form part of the ravine where the staircase spans. And in this case, I'm actually using my soldering iron to texture this as well, but I'm going to texture it further in just a few minutes. And then along the back, I add an additional piece of foam, another piece of quarter inch foam to kind of wrap a little bit more around the castle. And at the front, I use some more scrap pieces of foam to kind of build up that wall a little bit. The wall partially obscures the castle and I want to keep it that way. So as these blocks dry, I'm going to add in more. And on top of the five by four and a half inch piece, I added another small piece of foam that's about two inches wide, and then another quarter inch piece of foam on top of that. This is going to be where the main portion of the castle goes. That is the door um, and the right wing of it. The staircase is gonna span roughly across where my finger is. And in the meantime, I place in a hole for the fairy lights that I'm going to use. I elected to use the ones that had the cork stopper looking um, battery device and that way I could hide it with a little more ease behind the castle. Once I cut in the hole for the battery device, I removed it entirely and began the texture. Now there are a couple of different methods you can use. One is uh, just plain old fashioned spray paint. In this case, white would be the obvious logical choice. And I took this outside for the actual spray painting of this. But just for the sake of the camera, I did spray paint a test section on the inside and that way you can get an idea of the texture. And then the other method is to use a cotton ball soaked in acetone. And then I could just press that in various spaces and you can see where that was eating away at the styrofoam as well, giving it a more natural mountain-esque texture. It's not a word, we're going to use it anyway. And once I had it textured to my liking, I used a small spray bottle, added some water to it, and then a little bit of gray paint and a little bit of beige paint. Give that a good shake and then take your castle outside and mist it. That way you have a nice gray backdrop for your North Mountain. But it's not really gray, so we're going to go on ahead and give this a good coating of white too. Now I'm using just some plain old white acrylic paint and I'm just finally dusting it over the front, the tops, and the sides. Not going inside any sort of crevices really because I want this to look like the snow hit the mountain from all angles. And then once I have it painted with white, but with the gray accents peeking through, I'm using a mixture of some bath tissue, white glue, white paint, and water. I tore the bath tissue up into the squares, and then I cut them into smaller squares. Then I soaked them in the mixture for about 10 minutes. And then I'm using this bath tissue paper mache mixture to just kind of add the appearance of snow all over the castle. Then for the castle itself, I'm going to start with this small plastic vial. This is from my X-Acto knife. When I purchased the knife, it came with a selection of spare blades, and the blades were in this little tube. But if you don't have one of these handy, which you probably don't, you can use any piece of plastic packaging um, about two inches tall by three inches long and roll it up into a small cylinder. Use a little E6000 to glue it in place and some paper clips to hold it while it dries. Next, I'm gonna use the plastic packaging from a package of donuts. And these were just grocery store donuts. I picked them specifically for this packaging because it had the nice little um, uh, rounded ravines in them. And then also a package of clear straws. These are found easily in any package of Kool-Aid jammers and hugs, um, fruit drinkies thingies. And then I cut a small shape for the very front of the castle to go around the vial. I kind of drew in where I wanted the doors to go, including the door at the balcony, and then made the sketch around it, making sure to leave the space for the vial to fit in between on the middle. Glue that in place using E6000. And I'm using E6000 for this project a lot simply because it's a clear glue, it dries quickly, and it stays clear without yellowing. It also doesn't resist any sort of paints or nail polish. And then to make a quick balcony, I held the rounded curve of the very front of the vial on, onto another piece of plastic packaging and traced roughly an eighth of an inch around it and then directly along the edge of the vial. 
Then using some of the little curves from the donut packaging, I'm going to cut little triangles along the top. And the channels are great because they're mostly pre-done, but I am going to go in ahead and fold them accordion style just to give them more of the ice crystal look. I'm going to add these directly on top of my balcony on either side. And then I made longer shapes to go along the bottom. And you can see the two Kool-Aid jammer straws that I placed along the bottom of the balcony as well underneath as support poles. I also placed two above at the peak of the roof. And basically any sort of little um, other blank spaces that you see, you can go in ahead and fold and add the additional um, zigzaggy pieces there to look like crystals or ice crystals. Try your very best to follow the pattern of the castle. And then you can place that sheet. And then you can place that on top of another piece of plastic sheeting. And kind of sketch in the next portion of the castle. More zigzag pieces to fill in the sides. And you notice that there's a little space at the bottom, a gap where the actual cylinder is, and then on either side. That's important because that's where our lights are going to go later. And then I just continue to add any other pieces of pack plastic packaging wherever it was needed just to fill in the roof and the top portion. And then finally a small piece to fill in the left wing of the castle. Now you notice that in the movie you don't see the full left side of the castle and I left that the same way on the model as well. Only giving it a full right wing. I filled that in with little zigzaggy pieces and then it was time to paint. Now you can use paint for this like regular acrylic but it takes so many coats to get it right that I just went to a dollar store and picked up some white, light blue, dark blue and some clear nail polish, which I already had on hand. I painted the whole thing white with one, with one little layer of white nail polish, front and back, and this is a frosty white. And then I kind of brushed in some little light blue sections that I covered over with an additional layer of white to lighten them up and to fade them in. Keep acetone nearby so that you can clean off your brush and not, do, not contaminate your white with light blue. And then a Q-tip with some purple permanent marker on it, dipped in the acetone, makes perfect little light lavender streaks on it, and it gives it an iridescent quality. So this castle doesn't really look like ice in the daylight. But it does have a nice, cool, iridescent, bubbly kind of quality to it. Then for the staircase and the balcony, use small pieces of plastic packaging about an eighth of an inch. And then you can use the nail polish and a toothpick or a small nail brush or a dotting tool to trace in a small pattern or to draw in a small pattern. And then I used some clothing tags. And before I became like a really big miniaturist, I would just kind of take the clothing tags from everything I ever bought new and put them to the side. So I just saved a bunch of them. And that way I always had ready-made straws for my resin projects and drinks and things. But later I just started just buying packs of um, clothes tags from like Office Depot and um, Office Supply stores. For the fairy lights, I shaped a branch of 20 kind of like a T, and then I use the purple permanent marker to color in all the bulbs at the top of the T. I use my turquoise marker to color in the bulbs at the bottom of the T. And I twisted them tightly together so they would fit inside the little spaces that I left for the left for this in the castle. 
and I slid that inside. You may need to cut some pieces of plastic just to make room for it, and if so, just do it, but be careful not to actually mess up the front pieces of the castle that, you, that are actually painted, as you can see. And then I used a little E6000 to glue that in place, and once it was dry, I glued my battery pack into the hole that I created for it earlier, and in the very back you can see I bent a small piece of triangle so that it would help support the castle and make it stand up. And then I glued on any details like the balcony and the staircase as well. And that's it. You're done. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Bye.